In today's video, gents, 10 outdated style and etiquette rules that you need to stop following. First up, stop opening doors for women. Yeah, they want everything to be equal. Well, slam that door right in their face. No, no, no. Seriously, that's not what I mean by this point. The outdated etiquette rule I'm saying get rid of is only opening doors for women. My thoughts on this? How about be a gentleman to everybody, open doors for women, men, children, pretty much anybody that needs help. Now, I've seen guys down in the comments say that they don't open doors for women because, hey, what if it's a feminist and she gets up in my face and starts attacking me? Seriously, guys, what are the chances that's going to happen? And if they do, okay, you open them for everybody. So, what is this person's problem? You open that door for anyone that needs help. And that's the point I'm trying to get to, guys, is that a gentleman looks out for anyone, anyone that he can help, anyone that he can offer assistance to. Now, what about the old school rule that a man should always pay for the first date? Guys, I'm not going to touch this one because nine out of 10 women still expect a man to pay on the first date. And honestly, if you want a second date, I think it's worth compromising here. And if you really don't like that, well, how about you just tell her, hey, we had a great time. I'll pay for this first one. You get the next one. Next up, we've got the etiquette rule that a man should wait for a woman to extend her hand before you extend yours for a handshake. Now, if you go back and you read etiquette books written 40, 50 years ago, you will find this rule still written. I think it's incredibly outdated. The modern rule here, whether it's a man or a woman in Western culture, whenever you're coming up to a person you haven't met before, you want to introduce yourself. One of the most common ways that we introduce ourselves is with a handshake. So, go ahead and extend your hand. Basically, you're encouraging and you're showing a leadership role by basically starting the greeting. Now, what about the rule that a man should always be to the left of a woman when they're walking? Basically, you want a woman to your right. Is this a rule that you should follow? Only if you're carrying a sword. Whenever you pull your sword, obviously, if your sword is between you and the woman, you could actually cut her. So, not something you want to do, but most of the time, you're not carrying a sword. So, in that case, you can walk to the left or to the right. Unless it's the queen, then walk behind. Now, what about the rule, no elbows on the table? I'm going to say that you don't have to follow this anymore, which is funny because I enforce it at my house and my daughter catches me all the time. I'm pretty bad about putting my elbows on the table. But this goes back to an old rule whenever tables basically had trussle tables and that was when parts of the table would pull out. They couldn't take much weight. So, when you would put your elbows on it, guess what? The whole table would fall down. All the dishes would smash. I mean, it was a functional reason you didn't put the elbows on there. So, go ahead, put your elbows on that table when someone says something to you, you can inform, you know, let them know a little bit about history and how it really doesn't apply anymore. Now, what about the rule of tucking in your shirt? It really depends on the type of shirt. So, dress shirts, they're designed to be tucked because they've got longer tails. Now, what about casual button downs? So, casual button downs descended out of the dress shirt, but they brought in a wide variety of colors, pockets, epaulets, all different types of designs, and also the tail, the bottom of the shirt was changed up. They were made shorter. And it really depends on the length of the shirt. The key to ignoring this rule is to understand there are exceptions. I do recommend a man tuck in most shirts, but there are many shirts designed to actually be worn untucked. T-shirts, polos, the Wyabara, which is technically a dress shirt. So, when I say all dress shirts should be tucked in, there is an exception to that. When you understand that these hard and fast rules are more like guidelines, you understand that you can break them. Next up, we've got no brown in town and we've got no white after Labor Day. You can safely ignore these rules. Why did they even exist to begin with? Because it was a way to separate old money from new money. So, old money, they had these certain rules, these guidelines that they followed and they were able to identify who's in with the crowd and those that break them, even if they've got the money to afford the parties, to be able to wear the type of clothing, we know that they're not part of the crowd. Now, a lot of that stuff has gone away. Yes, you will still see it in certain societies that they have these rules that still exist. For the vast majority of us, you can pretty much ignore this stuff. The next outdated style rule you can throw out the window, always wear a suit to an interview. I love suits. I think that they make men look great. They make them look strong, masculine. But the problem with a suit is it's not appropriate for every type of interview. You've got to find out what, what is that company's dress code. Then maybe step one level above that, at least meet it. But if you're going to be working, let's say with your hands in a blue collar position, don't show up in a suit. If you're going to be working for a very casual company. It just kind of shows, you know, at a company that doesn't require it, it just shows that you're out of touch. You didn't do your homework and you need to find out, talk with the people at HR, talk to the people that are going to be conducting this interview. It's on you to find what that dress code is and to dress appropriately. 
Now, tied closely with that rule is that you need to wear a necktie when you're wearing a jacket. Now, if you watch any of my videos, I break this rule all the time. I really like this more casual look. Now, notice I always pull in a pocket square and I think this is a big thing here because when you wear a pocket square, even without wearing a necktie, I show that, hey, I pay attention to the details. I chose not to wear neckwear. Now, I do recommend that a man wear a tie if it brings the outfit together, especially with the collar type. Now, point collars actually are made to be worn with a necktie. This right here is a bit of a medium spread, so it's going to come out in a way and it's going to look fine. And I think that's what you need to pay attention to. How does the collar, how does the shirt look when you're wearing it without the necktie? The goal of the necktie was to bring it all together. And there are many shirts that they just look bad when not worn with the necktie. Also pay attention to the dress code because if it's required, then of course, wear the necktie. Next up, we've got the rule about taking off your hat when you're indoors. I say take this rule and throw it out the window. I know that's going to ruffle some feathers, but here's the thing is that whenever this rule was instituted, most men wore hats. There were hat racks everywhere. And when you walked into a place, you had a place where you could safely put your hat. Try that nowadays. You go into a restaurant, you go into a place and you want to take your hat off, but you've got to put it on a table and it's just going to be in the way. People are going to spill drinks on it. When you put it on the floor, people are going to step on it. You look around, there is no coat or hat rack. I'm caring about others by keeping my hat in a place where I know where it's at, where it's going to be safe and it's going to be out of the way. Don't mix black and brown. Don't mix black and navy. You're going to hear many people lay out rules about what colors should not go with what colors. Here's the thing is it those are general guidelines. Those are put out to guide newbies so that they don't, they just don't look really bad, but you still can pull off those color combinations. Navy and black, I think looks perfectly fine. Black and brown. I see that on shoes all the time where you've got basically the sole is going to be black and the upper is going to be dark brown, medium brown. And if you're unsure about a color, okay, practice wearing it around your house. Maybe get a few opinions, take a picture, put it in my free Facebook group, which I will link to down in the description. That's a great place where people post photos and they talk about, hey, how does this outfit look? And they get great feedback. The point being, get used to wearing it, build up your confidence. And when you have the confidence to wear that color combination, then just go ahead and wear it, walk out that door and feel great about how you look. The next style rule I think you can throw out the window, you've got to match your metals, you've got to match your leathers. Now, I understand why these rules exist. When you're just starting off, a lot of this can be confusing and this helps you avoid just really bad looks without intending to have that look. But here's the deal. You've got a pair of black shoes and you don't want to necessarily wear a black belt. You want to wear something a bit brighter, something with color. Hey, it's summery. Maybe you want to go with a pair of tan shoes and you want to go with a bright belt and the leather is just not going to even be close. Well, you can pull off that look if you understand what you're doing. When it comes to metals, okay, your wedding ring maybe is silver, your watches, you want to bring in something different. Maybe you want to go with a mixed gold. I understand I'm breaking it, but I'm going to own it and I am going to walk out with confidence. So, do you agree, disagree? Let me know down in the comments. What video to watch next? How about this one? 10 self-destructive obsessions that guys need to give up. I bet that you've got one or two of these. Yeah, check out the video right here, guys. I will be linking to it down in the description.